Hello world and welcome to another episode of FUBAR. In today's episode I'm going to give a brief introduction to what is GraphQL. If you're interested to watch more content about serverless, cloud computing and software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started! <laughs> I want to start today a little series of videos about AppSync. AppSync is a new managed service, well new, from Rainband 2017, a managed service from AWS to provide GraphQL. So I thought I started working on this video and I went directly to the code, I realized that I need to give you a little introduction. So I want to start the series with an introduction to what is GraphQL, very short, 10 minute introduction, so if you need to go to details, I will leave you more resources in the description of this video. The video that follows this one in this series is an introduction to AppSync and what it is. And then there will be one video on how to build a fully coding, no console AppSync endpoint with some GraphQL that is returning everything using serverless framework. And then it will be a fourth video creating the front end that will be consuming that back end. So at least with these four videos, you will have a big picture of what you can do with GraphQL. And if you want to see more or more details, just let me know in the comment box below. If there is a lot of people that are interested in one particular thing, I can always make another video. So now let's get started on what is GraphQL. It will be a short introduction, around 10 minutes. So. I hope you get the feeling of what is GraphQL with this introduction, so let's go to it. So let's start by talking about what is GraphQL. Let's go to the graphql.org webpage and check what it says. There, if we scroll down, it says a query language for your API. So what that means? To understand a little bit more about this, let's go and check how the traditional data fetching from a frontend, from a client to a backend works. We have a client, that is that phone that you can see, and we have the backend. So in the traditional way, we will have different endpoints. For example, if we are writing a blog, we might want to have one endpoint that returns all the IDs. And then when we want to open one particular blog, we can find a post by ID. And then we might want to show all the, uh, the title of a blog just by ID, so we can show it. So we might have another endpoint for that. And then we might want to search post by author, so we might have another endpoint for that. And then when you realize you have lots of endpoints that are returning more or less the same thing, all of things about the post. So either all the posts or all the posts by ID or all the post title or all the posts by an author. So at the end of the day, your API becomes very complex and hard to manage and it's something a new client is added, then there might be different types of visualization. So you might have even more endpoints. And usually these endpoints all return this JSON, that is data that you might want or might not want to show in the client. So you cannot just make a big uh, endpoint that returns everything because those clients might not have access to see those that information. So you need to be careful on what to show where. So now let's go and see the same example using GraphQL. So now we have our client and we have our backend. But this, in this case, the backend is uh, using one endpoint because it's a GraphQL endpoint. And now the client will be requesting the data, exactly the data that it wants. And then the GraphQL endpoint will be returning exactly the data that this client is requesting. So we can go back to the GraphQL web page and we can see the example that is on the top of the web page to understand a little bit more what this means. So you can describe your data to get exactly what you want. So in the, this case it's about projects. So we have the description of the data. This is called the schema. We have the project that has a name, a tagline and contributors. And we can see that the contributors are from type user. So we are, have a strong type data. Then the client will ask what they want. So it just wants the project named GraphQL and it wants the tagline. It doesn't want the contributors. And then it gets the result, the project tagline. And that's it. It's pretty straightforward. So you don't need to create another endpoint. If you want to show the contributors, the client should ask for the contributors. 
GraphQL is an specification. It was created by Facebook, but it's not an implementation. To use GraphQL, you need to use an implementation for the server side and for the client side. There are many different implementations for it. AppSync from AWS pro provides the server side implementation. So GraphQL is like a contract between the server and the client. When you have one to one, it's kind of sometimes very trivial, but the thing is when you have multiple different types of clients and different servers where you fetch the data, then this becomes very valuable. When we use GraphQL, we have an endpoint that makes a request with the query we want, and also with some variables that might be in the document. The server responds with the data that is being asked for, and in this case, the communication protocol, it doesn't matter if it's HTTP, sockets, or SSH, or whatever we can imagine, it's okay. Because GraphQL doesn't mind about the communication protocol. So now let's go and see this in action. To do this, we are going to go to the GitHub uh, GraphQL interface. So we can play with the GraphQL queries and mutations. So the first thing we need to do is to log in with our uh, user from GitHub. And then if we run the basic query that is there, we just will see something back. So we will see who is the logged user. That's the most simple query that you can write. But you can create a little bit more diff different query. If we go just to the docs, and there we can see the documentation. So let's type something else. We will write a query. And then if we click in query in the documentation, we can see all the queries we can write. So I want to find a query about users. So they're here. So if I click here, I can see more about this query. And this is the type user. So if I go here, I can see all the different parameters I can ask from a user. So let's go and do that. So I will do user. And if you see, it's helping me out. This is my user. And then if I do this, I can start seeing avatar URL. Then I can do video. You have the autocomplete company, for example, created ad and my name. So this is the query, basic query. So if I play it, then I can see this is my avatar URL. This is my video. This is a company I work from when I created my GitHub account and this is my name. So this is pretty straightforward. GitHub doesn't need to find a specific URL for all these queries. It just has one GraphQL and we create the query that we need. GraphQL, as I said, is two parts. There is the server part and the client part. So what the server does. The GraphQL servers takes care of your API. You write your API as a series of types definitions. GraphQL, as I said, is a strongly type. Also, the server takes care of resolving the different queries, fetching the data from the di right data source. And it also exposes the API, the GraphQL API, as an endpoint. So in the server, you write the functions for each field of your type. So in this case, we have the client, the GraphQL server, and different servers that are doing different things. We have another HTTP server, a Dynamo table, and MySQL database. So whenever the request comes in, the request is created by this shared schema, as we saw when we were creating the, the GitHub request. The server and the client know this schema, and then the request comes in, and this request will require GraphQL to know how to perform a select from the uh, SQL database. And this is something you need to write. These resolvers is something you need to write. As I say, GraphQL is not an implementation, so you need to write your own implementation to all your different data sources. The front end component of GraphQL is the one that makes the query to the back end. So there's also different kind of implementations of this. So we have this is our schema and we are going to get uh, the query is get the to-dos and then we have the to-do type and then the client will request for the ID and name of the to-dos and it will get from the server a JSON with the all the to-dos with those two attributes. So that's what the client does. It's pretty straightforward. Let's talk about what happens when a request arrives to the server. Then we know the the data is sparse from that request, and then the server will apply these resolver functions to each of these nodes. If the nodes are resolved with primitive types like strings, then it will just go to the next step. 
but if the nodes are resolved with some other types then it will go to those childs and resolve those children. When all the tree is resolved then it will go and ask for the data sources, the data from the different data sources and merge those uh, results from the data sources into some response and it will send it back to the client. This was the video for today, I hope you like it and remember to subscribe to this channel to know when the next video about the basics of AppSync comes out and if you have any comments, questions or whatever just leave them in the comment box below, I always read them and I try to make videos about things that you are interested in. If you think this video was good give it a big like and share it with friends that might be interested about this topic. Around here there are other videos from my channel for you to watch, so go ahead and click, and if not, I see you in the next episode of Fubar. Ciao!